Hi everybody, I'm Jim Porter and welcome to another edition of the Monotomy Journal. In this episode, we have the story of a national treasure that's found right here in Arlington. It's the Old Schwamm Mill. First listed with the National Register of Historic Places in October of 1971, the Old Schwamm Mill has been teaching visitors about the past for more than three decades. The mill is open for tours on Saturday and wood turning demonstrations on Tuesdays. For either one, you're free to stop by the mill anytime between 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. The Old Schwamm Mill is a shrine to human ingenuity and enterprise. Not only can we learn about our industrial past here, but we can also experience it. We can smell it, hear it, feel it, and see it. It affects us on such a deep personal level that we learn about ourselves and understand history in a way that no book or classroom can duplicate. This mill is irreplaceable and priceless. It's our hope that this program inspires you to help support the old Schwab mill. After all, this isn't just an old wooden building. This is where Arlington's history comes alive. Enjoy our show. The Old Schwamm Mill is a picture frame manufactory that was founded in 1864 uh, and was operated by five generations of the Schwamm family until 1969. The Schwamms were um, a German family, two German brothers who came over from the Rhineland uh, in the mid-19th century. One farm, seven boys, four girls. The girls could perhaps be, uh, would marry, but they still needed a dowry. What did you do with the seven boys? Six came here. They came from the Rhineland, south of the city of Mainz. It's near the French border, so very open to French influences. The, the Napoleonic Wars swept through there. Every war w that Germany has had has swept through the Rhineland. So they, they had a cosmopolitan outlook and also an outlook that things were quite relative. And so they sent, they sent an enormous number. The, the, between 1850 and 1900, the largest number of Germans to emigrate um, were, uh, were from the southern Rhineland. <laughs> Yes, to avoid the wars, the constant wars that Europeans had. They hoped that here, you know, this was going to be a, a, new, a new land without wars. The specialty of the Schwamm family was uh, in this country was piano cases and it was the time when piano, every middle class family aspired to have a piano in their home. Although um, this mill was started by Charles Schwamm, he was one of six brothers who came to Boston and of those five brothers were located in Arlington and of those three mills uh, ran in the 19th century and all of them uh, ran for almost a hundred years, two ran more than a hundred years. They were located in the Heights, starting with um, the Charles Schwamm Mill here, and um, including the Theodore Schwamm Mill, uh, the building is still extant, and the Jacob Schwamm Mill, which was located next to what is now Stop and Shop uh, Pharmacy. The building's no longer there, unfortunately. The Schwamms were part of Arlington's history. They were here and they weren't they didn't confine themselves exclusively to this building. Um, they were involved in uh, other aspects of this community and they're part of the history and part of the reason Arlington is what it is now. We are the oldest continuously operating mill site in North America. As early as the 1650s, there was a grist mill for grinding corn on this site. Uh, and then by the 1770s, there was a spice mill and under a series of owners right up until the early 1860s, and then the Schwamms take over in 1864. The middle section of the mill uh, was uh, built in 1861. It's the rebuilt spice mill that burned in 1860 
and the Schwams buy the spice mill in 1864, and they're starting with one small gable-roofed building, and then in 1869 they add a three-story finishing wing where the frames were sanded, glued, and varnished. Uh, and then they're adding um, the wing that we're in currently, uh, which was added in 1883 as the shipping and office wing. The barn that the Shaker Workshops uh, is in goes back to the 1700s. And if you go inside that barn, you will um, see the, the old timbers and you will you know, get a real sense that it's a 1700s building. And that's where the Schwamm stored their wood, which came to the mill uh, via the old Lexington and Arlington Railroad, where the Minuteman bike path is today. Um, and then the building next to the barn is the dry house. Um, years ago, the building had a 60-foot uh, chimney. It's, the chimney's been reduced by about half now. But uh, the chimney goes down to a kiln or oven down in the basement of that structure. And uh, that's where um, the wood that would be used in frame making was stacked to dry out. Uh, sometimes it could take as long as two months for the wood to uh, become usable for frame making. <laughs> Uh, a lot of people come in and, and the first thing they say is, this smells just like my grandfather's barn or my grandfather's wood shop. And it, uh, there's a sort of a fond memory of uh, an older type of uh, place that has wood shavings on the floor and the aroma of the wood. Just to come in, into the mill right away is the woodiness and is, is right to begin with something that you love. The way the floor just is so visually uh, attractive and intriguing because it's been worn down by more than a hundred years of people walking on it and the patina. And the building itself, which is what I particularly love uh, about the mill. You know, it's like walking back in time when you walk into this building. Atmosphere, the uh, rustic qualities, and just the, the, the whole ambiance of the place visually is uh, fascinating. This great sense of age that you see in the different spaces. And you know, the fact that it's all old and that it's right here, not hidden away, but sort of apparently hidden away in this little side street in Arlington, that it is still here is a, kind of a remarkable thing. So it's really the building itself that I find so fascinating, that it was built in three stages, um, and that it's, it's still here. And it's just amazing because, you know, yes, you've got lots of quite large, rambling brick mill buildings up in places like Lawrence and Lowell, but it is very, very rare to have a wooden sort of mid-size mill building. You needed the machinery, but you also needed a really skilled operator. And that period in uh, industrial evolution um, uh, was kind of eclipsed by total um, automation. What it really represents is the intersection of human craft with uh, mechanization, with industrialization. When you think of knitting mills and spinning mills, the people who worked those machines weren't actually involved uh, to this extent. They were tending a machine that basically needed to be started and oiled and maintained uh, and kind of set up, but the machine did the work. It's about man and the machine. But in this case, the operator tended the machine but also did the wood turning that the machine kind of made possible. It's this tight window of time in the mid-19th century. That's, that's uh, a little brief period in uh, our industrial history that uh, this place uh, has preserved. You know, this isn't like uh, a one-room shop cottage industry or, you know, uh, the boot mills of Lowell. It's something in between that doesn't typically survive. It's a hugely fragile uh, historic resource. This is a living history museum, um, and the um, exhibits are in motion. If you come here and we turn the belts on and the lathes, uh, which are very important to this story, these. Um, 
lathes that turn the frames that came over from Germany in the 1860s. You know, there, there, there's a lot uh, that's not static the way you might typically have in a museum. It's still working, and that's what's very important. That's what you always stress, that the, the working mill must continue to produce what it produced, quality, very high quality frames. These frames are entirely handmade from beginning to end in conjunction with this ra very rare technology. We make only about 50 a year, not the hundreds, you know, thousands that were made when the Schwams were here, but we're still, you know, using the machinery, keeping the craft alive. And, you know, and I think people come in here and they think, oh, they couldn't possibly be still in the business of frame making, but we are, in fact. There are frame shops and guilders who um, who have had working relationships with the, with the old Schwamm mill and who have ordered custom oval frames from the old Schwamm mill for many, many, many years. And they still come here uh, when, when a client comes to them and asks for a specific kind of a frame which is unavailable anyplace else. Well, we always talk about the fact that the White House uh, ordered uh, frames from the Schwamm mill. I think we've made frames for the White House. Uh, Buckingham Palace has ordered frames from us. And for the Vatican. Um, the, the Vatican has Schwann Mill frames. Some um, king out in Hawaii. And the mill made 14 quite large uh, escutcheon frames for the Royal Palace in Honolulu, Hawaii. People come here from state houses and uh, art galleries and uh, all kinds of prestigious places, historic societies across the world because they want a certain kind of uh, a shape in an oval frame and this is pretty much the only place that you can do it. And here it is, you know, sitting here in Arlington. The Oshuan Mill is really unique in that it has all the uh, original equipment aside from the molding machines. This machinery is from the 1860s and uh, it's unique and it's fascinating, it's hard to understand. Whenever I go to a place that has all the original furniture, the original everything, it's, there is nothing like it. You can't replace it. The fact that these machines do what they do and that it's, it's uh, kind of a marvelous process by which it's accomplished back in behind the wooden faceplate, this mechanism that's sliding and revolving and creating these ovals. Some bunch of men somewhere designed this stuff a long time ago and they uh, had to figure it all out. They had to design something that would accomplish this particular end result, which is an elliptical uh, frame. They had to make models of it. They had to design uh, foundry patterns. They had to have things cast up and machined and put together. And, and they did it in such a way, in such a uh, uh, high quality way, that this machinery from the 1860s, or perhaps even a little bit earlier, is still here doing what it was designed to do more than 140 years ago. I also am very uh, kind of uh, appreciative of the personal efforts by artisans uh, in the past that have caused this place to be here and the machinery and uh, the design of the machinery and the quality of the machinery and the fact that it's rugged but it allows you to create these beautifully delicate and intricate shapes and forms. Uh, to be uh, involved with the preservation of all this, this vintage technology, which as it turns out has never been superseded and can't even really be equal for what it does. To be entrusted with um, uh, taking care of it and preserving it, but using it as well and respectfully using it, uh, I just, you know, that's, that means a lot to me. I also know from what is left around here that uh, the original wood turners uh, uh, did. The frames that are, that are here still in sections of frames that they're uh, very, uh, a very fine quality and uh, I think they probably uh, had pride in their work.
the, the beauty of the transformation when you make something out of wood, in particular when you do it on a lathe, you start out with something that's kind of rough, uh, and, and, and then, you know, several hours later, uh, you have something that's really beautiful and smooth and round, or in this case, elliptical, and uh, you've got beads and coves turned into it. They wouldn't be working in wood if they didn't find that intriguing and, and beautiful and satisfying. We're surrounded by a world where new things are coming out for us to purchase every day. And um, they're almost always touted as being better than what was there before. But it turns out that this technology, as I mentioned earlier, has not been um, bettered. No matter what people have done since then, this is, is, has, yields more possibilities than anything else that's ever been come up with. And I think that's pretty amazing. The Shaker Workshops uh, were founded in 1970, and what they do is they reproduce um, original Shaker furniture. They work from measured drawings, and uh, they sell these really beautiful uh, reproductions of pieces that uh, the Shakers would have made back in the 19th century. I think it needs to be known that, that the mill and the dry house and the barn were almost torn down uh, because there was a, a sort of a window of transition between uh, the fourth and fifth generation Schwams uh, leaving here and selling the property to a trucking company who had plans to level everything and make a parking lot uh, for their trucks, just like the Joni Mitchell song about paving paradise. Uh, you know, that almost happened. This place was slated to be uh, demolished about 30 years ago, and it was just by the efforts of Patricia Fitzmorris that it was saved, and here it is. And if it wasn't for Pat Fitzmorris, uh, we wouldn't have all this, and, and she went about raising money to save the property. And really made it her, um, I don't know, it was kind of like her life's uh, work for the last almost 30 years of her life. Founded the mill as a museum in 1970. Uh, coming here and stoking the coal, you know, furnace for the boiler herself and things like that. And uh, worked here as an unpaid volunteer until her death in February 2001. Uh, so, you know, it was really Pat, through Pat's efforts, that uh, the old Schwann mill was designated a National Historic Landmark. I think when people wander into a place like this, on the average, they think men, which is true. You know, I, I suppose uh, in, the, in the grand scheme of things, all the people who worked here, almost all of them were men. You could almost bet on that. But the, lady who sa uh, the person who saved it was a lady. And I think that's kind of a wonderful, surprising uh, part of the history of the mill these days that should not be forgotten. We depend on our members and friends for donations. We depend on our rentals from Shaker Workshops, uh, from our furniture conservator, Melissa Carr, who is uh, in our basement, has a fantastic uh, shop down there. So, um, you know, it, it's a lot of pieces to make one puzzle that's going to keep this place afloat. And here you have this wooden house that needs a lot of repair? Primarily it's, it's funded privately. Um, we, you know, the, there's very little public money to work with these days, which makes it all the more urgent uh, that we become better supported by the community.
this is a, a wonderful resource to learn about American industrial history. This is uh, very likely the only installation of its kind left in the world. Patricia Fitzmorris saw, and we continue to see now, that this is something that is a part of Arlington. This is really like a, a family heirloom for the town. Mm -hmm. 